Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, my name is Kirsten Olson. I'm the workshop coordinator here at the Minnesota Center for Book Arts, um, and my pronouns are she, her. I'll be assisting tonight with technical support during the workshop. Before we begin, I just want to familiarize you a little bit with uh, the Zoom platform. If you look in the upper right corner of your screen, you'll see text that either says speaker view or gallery view. This is a toggle button to allow you to change the view. Gallery view will show each presenter in equal sized windows. Switching to speaker view will show the person speaking in a larger window with the other participants off to the side in smaller windows. You may pin the window you wish to focus on by clicking the three dots in the top left corner of that window and choosing pin video. During the demonstration portions, uh, we'll be using the spotlight feature tonight, um, which will feature uh, Kathy for everyone to see as their main view. In the lower left corner of your screen, you'll see the microphone and camera icons. Uh, we're asking that folks keep their microphones and cameras off tonight, just so that we get the most of a, out of our bandwidth. Um, if you have questions, please post them in the chat. Uh, the chat feature is down on the bottom. It looks like a thought bubble. And if you click on that, you'll get a sidebar window that allows you to view and send chat messages. You can type your message at the bottom of the screen and choose if you would prefer to, uh, to ask your questions of everyone or send it to a specific person. Um, you, you're welcome to send them to, to me and uh, to Annika directly if you'd like. Um, I'll be posting my contact information in the chat for you now. If you have any troubles, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can email me at workshops at mnbookarts.org, or you can text or call me at 646-269-7829. Uh, if you're using a mobile device, you may need to click on your screen or select more to find the chat. If you would like to change how your name is displayed in your window, you may hover over your image and select the three dot icon and then select rename and you can type your name as you'd like it to appear. If you're unable to locate that feature, you can send me a message in chat and I can update that for you. Um, I also want to note that the registration fees only make up a portion of the cost to present our workshops and artist talks. So I want to acknowledge that this activity is made possible by a grant provided by the Minnesota State Arts Board through an appropriation by the Minnesota State Legislature and a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts. Without further delay, I'm happy to introduce you to the MCBA host tonight, uh, Annika Schneider, Director of Exhibitions and Artist Programs. Thank you, Annika. Thank you, Kirsten. Hello, everyone. Welcome, and thank you for joining us tonight. Again, my name is Annika Schneider, and I use she, her pronouns, and I am the Director of Exhibitions and Artist Programs at Minnesota Center for Book Arts. Minnesota Center for Book Arts is a nonprofit arts organization focused on the book. We provide youth and adult workshops in paper making, letterpress printing, screen printing, book binding, paper marbling, and book related arts. Our programs span from exhibitions, visiting artist talks, fellowships, mentorships, an artist collective membership program, and artist consignment program in our shop. Sponsored by Learner Publishing Group and organized by the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library, the Biennial Award Minnesota Book Artist Award is presented as part of the Minnesota Book Awards and recognizes a Minnesota book artist or collaborative group for excellence of a new artistic work. Winners also demonstrate proficiency and quality in the book arts through three pieces of supporting previous work, as well as an ongoing commitment and significant, significant contributions to Minnesota's book arts community. Before introducing Kathy Ryan, the 2022 awardee, Elaine Hopkins from the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library will say a few words. Elaine. Thank you so much, Annika. Um, thank you all for being here tonight as well. I'm, I'm so pleased to just say a couple of words. Um, I, as Annika said, I'm Elaine Hopkins. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the Director of Programs and Services for the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library, which is a nonprofit organization that supports the St. Paul Public Library and serves as the Library of Congress designated Minnesota Center for the Book. One of the activities we do as um, in that role is present the Minnesota 
Open Book Awards, which has been around for 34 years. And I'm pretty thrilled that for the last 14 years, we've been able to partner with Minnesota Center for Book Arts on the Minnesota Book Artist Award. We've been really grateful for this opportunity and the, what the partnership provides in terms of celebrating the book in all of its forms. I'm especially pleased that we're able to celebrate and honor Kathy Ryan's work with Chronicle and her long-standing commitment to the book arts community. You can all continue to celebrate Kathy's work as well at the Minnesota Book Awards ceremony, which will happen on Tuesday, April 26th. So I'll put a link to that in the chat um, so that you can find out more about the ceremony. Um, we'll have some video elements and it's, it, it's gonna be the first time we'll be in person in two years. So we're really thrilled about it. Um, and there's a lot more information about our full Minnesota Book Awards program. But just wanna say again, a big, huge thank you to MCBA for this partnership. Thank you to Learner Publishing Group for being a continuing sponsor of this Book Artist Award. And congratulations, Kathy. Thank you, Elaine. Um, so it is now my pleasure to introduce Kathy Ryan, the winner of the 2022 Minnesota Book Artist Award for her pandemic inspired book entitled Chronicle. Kathy Ryan is a book artist and printmaker based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. She was awarded a 2011, 2012 MCBA Jerome Book Arts Fellowship and her work is included in the 2012 Quarry publication, A Thousand Artist Books. In 2014, she was an artist in resident at the Anderson Center for Interdisciplinary Studies in Red Wing, Minnesota. And in 2015, she co-curated the contained narrative, defining the contemporary artist book at Minnesota Center for Book Arts. Most recently, she was awarded a second MCBA Jerome Book Arts Fellowship for 2017, 2018, and an artist residency in Salzburg, Austria. Her work has been exhibited both nationally and internationally and is included in private and public collections, including the Minnesota Historical Society, Hennepin County Library Special Collections, and the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee Library Special Collections. She holds a bachelor's degree in art from San Francisco State University and a post-baccalaureate certificate in print paper book from Minneapolis College of Art and Design. And again, if questions arise during the talk, I invite everyone to submit their questions into the chat and we will get to them during the Q&A directly following Kathy's presentation. And without further ado, Kathy will now speak on her book work. Thank you, Annika. Um, hello, and thank you all for joining us uh, this evening. I wanna thank the Learner Publishing Group and the Friends of the St. Paul Public Libraries and MCBA for their sponsorship of this award. I feel tremendously honored to have received it. I also wanna thank the community of book artists um, in Minnesota for their welcoming spirit and their continued support and guidance. So um, as they, uh, they talked about earlier in this, um, in this talk, um, some of you know that there is currently an exhibition of my work in the main gallery at MCBA. And tonight I would like to um, talk about the development and evolution of ideas and the importance of intention in my work by looking at five books from that exhibition. Um, now with each book, I'm gonna talk about content and in some cases, page by page, and then I'll give a few notes about process. I do want to encourage you all to uh, submit any questions that come up during the talk um, to the chat. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping we can have a lively discussion at the end of my talk. So now I'd like to share some images of my work, but first I'm going to um, get rid of my picture here. And... We begin with convergence. Natural and built landscape has always been the main focus of my work and central to that idea, the idea of place, something intangible that draws me in. Uh, 
I had returned from a trip to Venice, Italy, and wanted to try and define my intense feelings about the experience of being in that city. Walking along pathways and over bridges, the same as others had done centuries before me, I was struck by the idea of past and present coming together in one place and of my actual awareness of that feeling. As with everywhere I visited, I took lots of pictures. In this book, I combined photographic images with abstract shapes and dual narratives to speak to connections between past and present. Now, an example of a dual narrative. The voices from the present are seen in darker toned type. An oar dips rhythmically in the water. Gray green liquid ripples against terracotta rock and tile. The gondolier sings softly. And then the voices from the past are rendered in type that is almost not visible. Sounds of life resound, whispers echo, voices etched on layered walls become dust, words scattered. Evening shadows embrace elegant facades. Ruby crystal lights slice through faceted glass and land like fireflies on the dark current. Leaded windows, shuttered eyes, mysterious, impenetrable, watch and remember secrets long hidden. Here is a dual narrative that defines place as the physical space that holds both past and present. This is a place built of water and light, a spectral city a living tapestry that captivates and disturbs. Light, infinite sublime, finds ancient hands in shaped stone and waters relentless, erode to reveal spirits living. And then I finally close with my voice at the end of the book speaking to the fact that sometimes we can never quite define that experience. I am in Venice haunted. Seduced by the splendor of decay and the invisible breath of the Adriatic, caught in the spaces where past and present converge. Creating this book was very personal to me a way of making concrete my response to finding myself in a place that affected me so deeply. I wanted to somehow capture that, to hold it for as long as I could. As to process, digital photography is overprinted with a layer of very transparent ink. The arched shapes are letterpress printed from polymer plates layered with the same transparent ink. The color change comes from the layering. The type is Garamond and Gil Sands Light, which I used for the voices from the past as another way to distinguish them from the voices in darker type. I wrote and produced this book in 2008. One of the reasons I became a book artist was to work with combinations of word and image. Now that is often what we're doing when making books, but each project is slightly different as to how we approach the relationship between word and image and why we make the choices that we do. Great writers have always had the power to convey the sense, a sense of place through vivid and compelling narrative. As readers, we explore those places through the force and beauty of their words. Atlas is my attempt to make visual some of those words. Here's one of the text pages. 
from the Chrysanthemums by John Steinbeck. The high gray flannel fog of winter closed off the Salinas Valley from the sky and from all the rest of the world. On every side, it sat like a lid on the mountains and made of the great valley a closed pot. On the broad level land floor, the gang plows bit deep and left the black earth shining like metal where the shares had cut. On the foothill ranches across the Salinas River, the yellow stubble fields seemed to be bathed in pale cold sunshine. But there was no sunshine in the valley now in December. Here's another from Wolf Willow by Wallace Stegner. On that monotonous surface with its occasional ship-like farm, its atolls of shelter belt trees, its level ring of horizon, there is little to interrupt the eye. Roads run straight between parallel lines of fence until they intersect the circle of the horizon. It is a landscape of circles, radii, perspective exercises, a country of geometry. And from My Antonia by Willa Cather. Beyond the pond, on the slope that climbed to the cornfield, there was, faintly, faintly marked in the grass, a great circle where the Indians used to ride. Whenever one looked at this slope against the setting sun, the circle showed like a pattern in the grass. And this morning, when the first light spray of snow lay over it, came out with a wonderful distinctness, like strokes of Chinese white on canvas. From Delta Wedding by Eudora Welty. In the Delta, the sunsets were reddest light. The sun went down lopsided and wide as a rose on a stem in the west. And the west was a milk white edge like the foam of the sea. The sky, the field, the little track and the bayou. Over and over, all that had been bright or dark was now one color. Atlas is a suite of seven prints and related text pages that I did in 2012. The images are screen printed and I made them as minimal as possible, trying to find the essence of the words. And on the text pages, while I use the entire excerpt for context, the larger italic type is the portion of the text I chose to capture visually. The images are printed on Reeves BFK and the text pages are on Japanese Mulberry. I guess I would call this next project a turning point for me. What had been a focus on observing the land from many different perspectives was becoming a search for finding a more intimate or personal connection to nature. I was also interested in finding ways to subtly foster environmental awareness through my work. In 2017, I started with the idea of exploring the five senses and chose the natural resource of water as the overarching theme. The intent of the book was to illuminate some of the ways our lives are deeply enhanced by the natural world and to reinforce the belief that environmental stewardship, whatever form it takes, flows from our personal connections to nature. During my research, I found a quote from Jacques Cousteau, people protect what they love. And these words became the link between the first half of the book, which talks about sensory awareness, and the second half of the book where the message changes to one of environmental advocacy.
To begin, I look at the many forms water can take through the lens of the five senses and the power of memory to enhance a connection in the present. I start with a definition of sense. And then a sampling of pages that focus on a specific sense. Here is sound. The soft pulsing rhythm of the tides. Staccato drumming of raindrops on the glass. White water roaring through a narrow canyon. Stillness in a frozen pond. And touch, caught in a drenching rain, wrapped in humidity, burnt by steam, splashing through muddy puddles. And sight, reflections shaped by changing currents, misty haze around a midnight moon, ice crystals on fallen leaves, fog lifting above the river. Then I move to two pages that mark the change of focus and link personal connections to the natural world with environmental awareness. People protect what they love. And I close with two pages that leave the reader with an endorsement for environmental advocacy. Note the definition of save, a page that mirrors the beginning of the book and the definition of sense. Water, an essential wonder. Once again, I chose screen printing as the main process. I came to bookmaking as a screen printer, so it was a natural transition for me. I also want to mention that all the screen printed images, both in this book and the others, are made from hand cut ruby lith film positives that I use to expose my screens. I like screen printing, especially as it allows me to work with sometimes extreme, almost invisible colors, which in turn allow for a lot of layering. The type is letterpress printed in Garamond and Gil Sands light. The box is Verona Rayon book cloth over bookboard. My interest in the idea of making a personal connection with nature found its way into several books. In 2019, I started to look at the idea of where we find nature and how we define that interaction. Is it deep in a forest or right outside our window? I was especially interested in urban environments and I wanted to focus on a place that was accessible to everyone. I chose the McNeely Conservatory in St. Paul and with a friend, I began a year of random visits. Urban Oasis is about finding a place for reflection and renewal through nature. It is a record of my thoughts and visual discoveries time spent in the conservatory and the gardens, watching and listening. The opening quote is a signal to the viewer and sets the tone for the entire book. If you will stay close to nature, to its simplicity, to the small things hardly noticeable, these things can unexpectedly become great and immeasurable. Entering, in from the winter chill, soft caress of warm air, sink into the green. We enter my favorite space and are surrounded by giant palm trees. Then wandering without destination, discovering visual treasure. 
Some of those visual treasures are changes in the angle of light. Or different shadow patterns. Or textures. Or colors. And then with a the change of season, pausing in an artist's garden. I move to the Japanese gardens. And standing still to the lily ponds just outside the conservatory. I end with the word reflecting. This project is an installation piece stretching along the wall for about 16 feet, requiring the viewer to walk through the pages much as they would walk through the conservatory. The text leads the viewer with references to movement. You may have noticed words like entering, wandering, breathing, pausing, standing still. And those text pages are letterpress printed. The images involve screen printed paper collaged over black and white digital prints. The combination of color and black and white is about seeing something in a different way by changing your focus. This project taught me the value of returning to a place again and again. I was made aware of seemingly insignificant changes in the plant life that signaled a dynamic living environment. I became so familiar with certain spaces in the conservatory, in a sense, they became mine. I found those small things hardly noticeable that Rilke talks about. And then it was 2020. I knew at some point that this year would become, for anyone involved in creative work, a unique opportunity to speak to a universal experience. Even given countless reactions and perspectives, we would all find a way to share our own sense of the reality of a global pandemic and everyone would understand. Chronicle is about the stark contrast between the tranquility of meditation on, a, on the reassuring cycles of nature amid the chaos and uncertainty of political turmoil and a worldwide health crisis. Early in that year, I realized that I was increasingly drawn to my windows and the trees in the park just across the street. I could sit for long periods of time or simply wander past them, just taking in the changing weather patterns that formed a backdrop for the shapes of the trees or watching colors transform winter into spring. In the background, however, Always, the jarring reality of world events was never far from consciousness. It is just that state of dissonance that I tried to create in this book. As the pages move through the seasons and the never ending display of breaking news. Now in the center of this book, there are six two page spreads each covering roughly two months, March 2020 through January 2021. I'll read brief excerpts from each of the meditations with an example of an accompanying newswire. To begin, The trees on the opposite side of the glass, my constant companions, 
their dark skeletal forms standing sentry. And soon as leaves return and change, they become my link to the passage of time. Governor Tim Walz has ordered Minnesotans to stay at home for two weeks as part of the state's ongoing efforts to control the spread of the coronavirus. NPR News, 325-2020. The sweet haze of spring green covers bare branches. And sometimes, glancing out the window, I think I'm living in a tree house. The death of George Floyd while in custody of Minneapolis police has set off days of protests, a state of emergency, and the call out of the Minnesota National Guard. MinPost, 529-2020. A tapestry of starlight blankets the leafy canopy, lighting the celestial theater. And late at night, the windows reveal my solitary reflection, an audience of one. Dr. Anthony Fauci says US could reach 100,000 virus cases a day as warnings grow darker. New York Times, 7 1 2020. Autumn warms the trees, vivid and ablaze with brilliant color. There is a breath of possibility in the cool, crisp air. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Supreme Court Justice and legal pioneer for gender equality, dies at 87. Washington Post, 9 18, 2020. November is in between, gray with fading colors. Now is when I most feel the weight of time. As voting nears end, battle intensifies over which ballots will count. New York Times, 11-2-2020. As the fog lifts, patches of sunlight appear. Vivid blue pushes through the heavy mist. And through my windows, I catch a glimmer of hope. Terrifying scope of January 6th attack becoming clear as Washington locks down for Biden's inauguration. CNN 1 2021. Chronicle, like most of my books, was screen printed. With this book in particular, my ability to print very, very transparent images was key to rendering those minimal tree shapes. Sort of the essence of the park as opposed to a strict representation. The text is letterpress printed in Garamond and Gilsan's light, two different typefaces to differentiate the private words from the public. The cover is Hanji Irish Gray, and the box is Japanese book cloth. Chronicle was my first foray into weaving current events into what is essentially very personal content. It was also my way of trying to put that year into perspective, to find some positive aspect while not forgetting the devastation that so many experienced. I wanna thank you again for joining me in this evening. Thank you, Kathy. No, I think I've got, wait a minute. Hold on, I'll get back there. Okay. I think I will anyway. Nope. 
you had your camera on a moment ago. Oh, there we go. I think I think I've got it right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh. Something is still okay. Finally. Okay. Great. Thank you. Oh, Kathy, oh. Your, your camera isn't on. All right. Here we go. Perfect. Finally. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Oh. Perfect. Thank you so much for walking us through those works. And I just want to remind and invite everyone to the closing reception at the MCBA main gallery this coming Thursday, March 3rd from 6 to 9 p.m. And it does not look like it should be snowy. So hopefully people will be able to come out and celebrate Chronicle and Kathy's work. Are you ready for some questions, Kathy? Sure, absolutely. Okay. So Leslie Martin says, Kathy, are there any, this was after um, you were talking about Urban Oasis. Are there, ah. are there other locales you have yet to visit or have already explored that provoke your keen awareness of convergence of, of past with present? A new book focused on this local in the wings, perhaps. I'm not sure what that means. Your work is stunning and inspiring, moving and meditative to brava. Ah, so I think the question was, are there other places? Um, you know, it was interesting when I started the whole conservatory thing, finding, finding those kind, that kind of place. It was um, a very sort of intense experience. Um, and I did spend quite a long time, sort of month after month, visiting it randomly. So I haven't really, I guess, moved beyond that space. Um, I, as I said, I, I picked it because it's an urban environment. It's very accessible. And I, I just wanted to find a place close to home, I guess, to see if I could, um, experience what it was I, I was trying to um, describe. So I, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, I think the second part is, I think, is there anywhere else or anywhere you plan that um, mixes your awareness um, of past with presence? Ah, okay. You mean like the Venice book? Okay. Yeah, I think so. You know, I'm, I'm not sure. Again, you know, that really was a very specific experience. I think for the I think for all of you, whoever's been to Venice, one of the things that that I think really strikes people is you are walking over pathways that other that many, many people centuries before you have walked on. Um, and you kind of, the, the environment kind of, it, it's kind of permeated with that. So I would imagine there are other places, especially in Europe that are like that, but I, I can't really name any at this point that I've even thought about yet. It's sort of like it, when it happens to you, it kind of happens to you, you know? Great, okay, another question. So now that things are getting so crazy, are you drawn to focus on environmental issues or current issues? Oh, I think I'm still very much interested in environmental issues. Um, and I haven't yet figured out what the next part of that is going to be. But I think for me, um, that kind of specificity, something that I can really kind of get my hands around, uh, like environmental awareness or just just um, the, the idea of, of making a personal connection to nature, which then will um, inspire you to become involved. Uh, that, that's the kind of thing I think I'm really interested in at this point. Yeah, I think what's so amazing about Chronicle is that you are able to weave the story about the environment and tie it to sort of your own personal environment mm -hmm. in a different way from your past works that maybe are a little more environmentally focused on sort of environmental preservation. Right, right. 
and then tie it through this narrative of whatever was the current event from the murder of George Floyd to the coronavirus updates mm -hmm. to voting. Yeah, and I think part of that was because that year was so different. You know, we spent so much time in our own spaces that um, for me, it was about finding finding something that I could focus on and and that which was the park for me. Um, but again, you know, we couldn't, there was no way that we could really get away from what was happening in the world. So yeah, it was, for me, that was a very kind of different experience. You're getting also so many messages of how inspiring. Oh, great. Oh, thank, you, thank you, thank you. Thank um, you. I have another question. When you are using your own writing or that of others, is there a difference between how you develop and combine text and image? Oh, you know, I, I don't think there is, no. I think it's driven by the words, whether they're mine or someone else's. So, you know, my work, my work, there, there's a, 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 an arc of similarity about my um, image making. And so I would say that what I do, what I, what I try and find is a way to best kind of supplement the words. Um, because whether I'm writing or finding someone else's words, the words generally come first for me. So what I try and do with the images is find something that enhances those words. Okay. Another question. I'm curious if you can speak to your use of quotations. Does drawing the voices of others into your work feel key to you? Okay, um, in certain pieces it does. One, one of the books that's um, at MCBA right now, uh, and this will sort of, this is sort of an example of I, that I think will help answer that question. Um, I, I didn't choose to show it in this particular presentation, but it's, um, it's a, a huge image that can be put up on a wall and, and there are lots of text pages um, it's sort of like a puzzle. And part of the puzzle is a lot of text pages. Each one of the text pages is um, a quotation. Again, it's about making a connection with nature. So I went out and found as many people who had talked about their own personal connections as I could. And those are the quotations that I chose for this book. And I chose to do it that way because I wanted a chorus of voices. I didn't want it to be just my voice. And I guess th 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 if there's any difference about how I approach a project, it's whether or not I think it's gonna be my voice or will the project really be enhanced by this chorus of voices. So um, I'm not sure I'm answering the question. I'm not sure I'm remembering exactly, but, but it's why, why do I choose that? Why do I go from my, you know, is there any difference between my words or the words of others? But um, yeah, I think it, you answered it. Cause it's, yeah, it's kind of uh, driven drawing, by what I'm trying to do. Yeah. yeah. Does drawing the voices of others into your work feel key to you? And oh yeah, in, yes. in some cases it really does, yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I'm wondering just because, you know, I know from my experience of, you know, curating and installing the work with you in the exhibition and how we work together to pick the pieces and pick where they went, of, does the narrative of what each of your works, does that kind of lead you into the next work or do you feel like it's more from, outside influences, writing, your reading, all of that, because I felt like, you know, we were finding such clear keys and 
links between the works when we were finally able to see them all together in a physical space. Yeah, I think that, that at least what I'm trying to do um, with each subsequent project, I try and challenge myself to move a little bit further. You know, I've really sort of attached myself to this idea of, of nature and, and how can we bring it into our lives in, 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 in really personal ways. And so with each project, I try and find a connection to that, um, but to move it to a different level, to move it, move it beyond, to make it a little bit more, you know, I think, I think sometimes it's just like I'm looking for something. And as I do the work, I think I'm, I'm finding the answers that I'm looking for. Um, but that means with each project that you got to keep asking the questions. So I think that's, that's, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. There definitely is a connection between the work and you that's have, been intentional, yeah. You have recurring questions you're asking yourself? Um, different for each No, one? I think it's to go deeper. Mm -hmm. I, think, mm -hmm. I think the idea is to go deeper, you know, is there a way? Um, to find more in this same kind of pool of subject matter. Um, Casey asked, um, what are you currently working on, Kathy? Okay. <laughs> working on anything? Am I, okay, I'm gonna, so I just finished this book, this Chronicle, which was a, you know, it was a huge, for me, a huge undertaking because as many of you know, those of you who know me, um, I'm not hugely fond of, of binding books. So I do small editions, and but bookmaking is hard for me. So uh, when I finished it, and I, I finished doing the binding probably a couple of weeks ago, I decided that the next thing I was gonna do would be a series of prints. Um, and I'm looking at the idea of weather, which is crazy, but because I've not ever really focused that much on weather patterns and, you know, I'm not, I, I, I am, I sort of define myself as sort of a weather freak. I'm constantly watching the weather report on television. Um, but I wanna, I wanna find out why that is. And so, I'm going to try to do a series of prints where I explore visually, just visually this time, I think, what, what this means to me. You know, why do I, why am, why am I so intensely interested in weather patterns? I mean, I think ultimately that may find its way back to an environmental message because obviously we are experiencing huge extremes in weather now, and, and that's obviously also connected to global warming. So, you know, ultimately I may end up back there, so. I think that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. Um, do you think you'll have sort of a time constraint or timeline on that well as to how you investigate that? Because for both Chronicle and Urban Oasis, you were kind of looking at oh, specific the time. span of a year, yeah, yeah. Yeah, span of a year. And that's that's really a good question. I mean, I do tend, for whatever reason, I'm not sure it's, I'm not sure it's even conscious, but I usually take about a year on a project. Yeah, yeah. So that's probably true. That's probably what will happen here. Yeah. Um, someone's wondering if clouds or do you think clouds? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. In fact, I, I'm, I'm, I was starting to think about you know I have to start looking at like there's a million different cloud formations and they've got incredible names and all that kind of thing. So I, I really have to spend a little time learning what those are. So that'll be great. It'll be like a great research project. As yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm wondering how 
you for Chronicle picked the specific headlines you did? Uh-huh. Like, and did you collect them over the course of the year or did you go back and do research? No, I went you? back and did research, okay. yeah. And why, and how did I pick the specific ones? I think I wanted to weave a little bit of the story of the pandemic throughout the six, um, at the, the 12 month period. But I also didn't want to forget about the things that were so um, devastating beyond the pandemic, like George Floyd, like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, like the insurrection, like the crazy election year. Um, So I, I just, I think I collected a bunch and then just systematically um, brought it down to, I think there's, I think there's of, of the news feed, there's 12 items. So there's one per page. And um, I began the book with, with the coronavirus related ones just to set the tone, but quickly moved into into other things, yeah. I, I think it was a really great choice to move to uh, into other things. Mm-hmm. It really then encapsulates, encapsulates sort of all the threads of the year because the year contained so much more right. that was interwoven with the coronavirus. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah. Yes, um, someone is wondering if, any of the books or editions, and if so, how many? Um, there, the the um, Chronicle uh, is an edition of seven. Um, back when I did uh, Convergence, it was probably the biggest edition I've ever done. It was, um, I think, ten. I think there were ten in that. So it's. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh. Um, I think there were seven of Sensing Wonder. The um, Urban Oasis, of course, because it's an installation is a unique piece. Um, And let's see, I think that's it. Yeah, oh, uh, Atlas. Atlas, let's see, I think there were maybe, I think there were maybe seven in that. For some reason, I somehow, I don't necessarily start looking to make seven of something, but a lot of times that's what happens. So yeah, that's, that's where it's at at this point. Yeah. What was that experience? Because you did go back and then do the research to look back at the year as a whole. And then now as you're rushing to get Chronicle all all down and finished, to even have even more space of looking, did any of it change meaning for you um, from the headlines Um, or just the text of? No, I I mean, that's a good question. I think even looking at it now, I I don't know how everybody else feels, but I think of 2020 like this, it's just like this, except for the fact that it, you know, when it, it kind of moves into the beginning of 2021, but 2020 for me was so specific and encapsulated that um, when I look back at it, you know, I look back at it and I think, of course, there are, pro-, you know, like any book you do, you think, if you look at it a year later, you, you think of, there are tiny things throughout that you think you might change. But I think as far as the, the news feed, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty pretty satisfied with that as far as um, did it did it cover it in the way that I wanted it covered and I think it did yeah yeah and I think now that you know talking about you really feel like it was a contained year and now yeah. that you did choose to bind this book yes exactly. <laughs> for urban oasis it really 
ties it all together. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. That I never thought of it that way, but you're absolutely right. It had to be a bound book. Yes. You're right. Uh, yeah. 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 Yes. Um, which really just seeing it because so many of your other pieces and sounds like your next piece now with the weather sort of already is like unfurling installation book pieces yeah. that yeah, yeah. sort of yeah expand and expand outwards versus yeah exactly outwards. exactly yes. exactly no you're right you're right yeah yeah well does anyone else have any questions please put them in the chat if there's any last questions otherwise hopefully you come to see kathy in a week and ask her anything that you've been thinking about as you reflect on this talk <laughs> yes, I will be happy to answer any yes. other questions then. Yes. You're still getting lots of congratulations, Kathy. Oh, and that is so nice. Thank you so much, everybody. Everybody who came to this and thank you for listening to me. And and I hope I do see you, some of you, um, next Thursday night. It would be great. And apparently there's a cloud appreciation society. I know I saw that. I saw that <laughs> little note come up. Peggy. Thank you, Peggy. I saw it. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, if there's any last questions, put them in. Otherwise, I think we are coming to the end. So thank you everyone for joining us. And thank you so much, Kathy. It was Oh, thank Great to you. See the trajectory over those um, five pieces. Thank you. Thank you. You might want to mention that she can save the chat. Okay. Oh, I can? Oh. Yeah, I would love to see the chat. Yeah. Okay. So the three dots in the lower right of the chat window. Oh, you okay. see next to the smiley face, Kathy. Oh, yeah, I, do. I think it'll send us the transcript as well since we're recording. Oh, okay. great. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks have so a much. Good night. Wonderful thank presentation. You, oh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye, wonderful. Bye-bye, thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>